And that's a perfect metaphor for this fear that people have, which is if inadvertently scientists go and learn everything with each new soulless factoid that turns us just into a bunch of equations or biochemical sort of pathways, that with each new factoid on one of the stars in the sky will go dark as we lose some of our individuality, as we lose some of what makes us who we are. There's no reason to worry about and this is for two reasons. First off, even if scientists went and inadvertently explained everything, that still would not take away the wonder of it. You can take a gazelle leaping and turn it into a whole bunch of biomechanical equations. You could turn Bach into contrapuntal rules, and that does not in the slightest change, or should not in the slightest change, our capacity to be moved intensely by them. And there's no reason why something should lose its power simply because it turns out to have layers of complexity that were not initially available to us, which we slowly attain. It should not destroy that sense in the slightest. The second reason why this isn't something to worry about is scientists are never going to inadvertently go and explain everything about everything. Because we've seen throughout the class over and over and over again, every time one question gets answered, ten more get generated, half a dozen of which are much more interesting questions than you started off with. It is a fractal, it is an infinite fractal of knowledge to be attained. They're never going to go and inadvertently explain everything. A wonderful quote from the geneticist Haldane. He's the one who came up with two brothers or eight cousins. Another one of these where he once said, Life is not only stranger than we imagine, life is stranger than we can imagine. Scientists are never going to inadvertently go and explain everything. The purpose of science is not to cure us of a sense of mystery. The purpose of science is to constantly reinvent it. So that's one realm in which people are threatened by all the sorts of knowledge and where this is going in terms of describing what makes us who we are. There's another realm, not just the what happens to our sense of selfness, another realm of what does society do with this? What does society do as we get more and more of these terms and we understand more and more where the gears are, where the controls are, where the challenges are to the sense of autonomy and agency in people? What's going to happen at that point? What's clear is, if you are poor or poorly connected, you are screwed. Because as more and more of these labels are given out, that's just the excuse that's needed to deny you a job or health care or fair housing. That is clearly an enormous danger with knowledge with this. But hopefully what happens instead in a more optimistic note is somewhere in all these continua that this class was about, you see there but for the grace of God and a couple of neurotransmitters and three or four more receptors could go I as you begin to see a continua, as you begin to see all sorts of realms that are tragically done in biology. We have no trouble looking at a schizophrenic and seeing this is a disease and this is someone who needs our care and forgiveness and protection. And we are in a world now where people who obsessively count numbers eight hours a day, we will have to be able to view that as just as much a disease that is just as much deserving of care and protection and understanding. With any luck, what all this knowledge is going to do is force us to extend an umbrella of protection, a realm of empathy into areas we could never have dreamt of before but never have dreamt of at the same exact extent that if you took the wisest, most compassionate, most introspective person on earth from 500 years ago and told them epilepsy is a disease, it would have made no sense at all. And we are certainly sitting here with a whole world of things where it could make no sense to us at all, where we will come to see that it has biological components as strongly as any of these others, and we will have this challenge of seeing that this is a realm, not of judgment, but of protection. And when we reach that point, we will have discovered that when we describe somebody as being healthy, when we say we are healthy, what we're really saying is we merely have the same diseases that everybody else does.
and with any luck, out of this will come a great deal of compassion. Okay, so that's where all of this may play out in terms of the challenge to people's sense of individuality, what society should do with knowledge like this as it emerges. What's probably most important is what all this stuff means in terms of impacting you and your interactions in society and what you will wind up doing. One of the totally irritating themes, probably the most irritating concept in this whole course, is the one of modulation, these stupid if-then clauses, because what they say over and over and over again is, just when you think you figured out what is causing behavior, oh no, it's not actually causing it, it is amplifying the pre-existing tendency of this, or damping, or modulating, or imposing a contingent clause, doesn't anything cause anything? Is like the entire point of this class that nothing ever actually starts a behavior. Everything is modulating everything, so you can never figure out how stuff is actually working. Why does this have to be so complicated? And one thing that comes out of the why does it have to be so complicated is why does it have to be so difficult to do something helpful in any of these realms? And I know for a fact that a large majority of you have the desire to do that figuring and some of the things you want to do for the rest of your life. And what is really easy is to come out of a course like this saying it's really impossible to change anything because it is so incredibly complicated. It is really hard to do because of how complicated it is, but it's not impossible. It's really hard to do it because it will require not only doing vast amounts of work and collecting vast amounts of information, but then trying to synthesize it and trying to improve it in one which is not paying attention to the vast amounts of information. It is doable, but it will be incredibly hard because down the line, every time one of you guys will choose to try to do something with a level of excellence that comes to people here very easily, every time you choose to do something, you are de facto saying no to 20 other things, and some of those other things will be very, very important things to you, and those are tough choices to make. And it will be doable but hard because something that's probably utterly inconceivable to you guys, but which is at some point you're going to get tired and it gets a lot harder to try to turn all of this into how can you make things better. But you guys need to do that.